At the very end of this video, I'm going to have an explanation of exactly what happened and how you might be able to avoid this kind of disaster in the future. Hi, I'm Trinity Vandenacre. Today, I'm going to be riding 100,000 feet for 100,000 subscribers. Now, what that means is my 12-year-old my son had this idea that once I hit 100,000 subs, subs on YouTube, then I needed to do something special. And I said, well, what would that be? And he said, well, like ride 100,000 miles on a horse. And I'm like, I don't think that's gonna work. So <laughs> that's a long, that's a few times around the, the uh, world. Anyway, I uh, said what I would do is ride 100,000 feet, which is about 19 miles. So sadly, it's in the middle of winter time in Montana, so it's gonna be a little cold. I'm gonna go right up over these mountains over here and end up back at my dad's place on the other side. This is Calabar. I'm gonna get on him and I'm gonna ride him for about half of it. When I get to about halfway, my dad's gonna meet me with a second horse so I can have a fresh horse for the last nine miles. Making sure I don't get any oh, hair in my cinch. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> you don't want to make sure you don't pinch any hair in the cinch. You get a nice pinch there. All right. All right, Dad. I'm gonna head out. Okay. Everything's. Lord, we just ask that you would watch over Trinity and Calabar today and keep them safe and give them, give Trinity wisdom and what he needs to do. And thank mm -hmm. you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Calabar, are you ready to go roll, buddy? Huh? You ready to roll? I think he, I think he's ready to roll. He's sitting around for too long. Yeah. He's ready to go. All right. Because it's dragging it all, then they aren't paying attention to you. Yeah, exactly. It's something. And it don't take much. It don't take long. It just takes until oh. they quit dragging that leg and start yeah. getting Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. There you go. Hey, roll bars. You look pretty good. Yep. He's ready to roll. <laughs> All right, Dad. All right, I'm gonna wait to make sure you get through that gate. Okay. I'll tell you one thing, it's sure is beautiful out here. So the plan was for me to start down here, right at the bottom of the map where my dad dropped me off, and then ride up over the mountains, down the other side, and then across this front down to my dad's place. About halfway though, my dad was gonna drive up and meet me with a fresh horse so that I had a fresh horse halfway through. Sometimes it's really hard for one horse to buck the snow, especially through up all this uphill and mountainous stuff um, for that far. That would make my complete route 100,000 feet or 18.9 miles. Okay, I'm just starting out on my 19 mile ride now. I'm on the road, actually I'm about a three quarters of a mile down the road because I didn't anticipate this, but the batteries for the GoPro are so cold. Down here in the bottom of this canyon, it's about two degrees at the moment. This is 8.15 in the morning, somewhere in there. And uh, they, they get so cold that the camera shuts off. So I didn't, I didn't anticipate that happening. So I have to stick the GoPro in my armpit while I'm not shooting to actually get it to actually record so it's it's pretty chilly down here you can see that the sun is up there on the top of the ridge you can see it on the tops of the trees right up there to my left but down here in the bottom uh, the cold air kind of sinks down to these bottoms and, and the, the warmer air is up above so once I get up it, it's kind of in, counterintuitive sometimes but the higher I get today um, the warmer it should be. 
And then once I start down the other side, that's going to be a little cold, but I, I should be, you know, the, the longer in the day, the later in the day is a little better than early in the morning. That's about as cold as it's going to get. So, the Calabar is doing well, but uh, we haven't gone that far yet. He's kind of fat and out of shape. This is solid ice right here. So, luckily, uh, my horse is shod with sharp shoes, so, oh, but I might fall through it. <laughs> Ooh, you can hear that ice about to break. <clears throat> so he's, he's not really sure about this. He's gonna he's oh, he's gonna get up on the side so he doesn't have to walk on it anymore. But that's pretty solid ice there. You don't want to. You got to be careful with that kind of stuff. But since I'm shod, <clears throat> I knew this was gonna be. I knew this was gonna be pretty dang icy up through here because people have been driving on it and uh, everything. So I put shoes on that are basically like. I'll show them to you, but they have um, shoes with spikes, so it's like walking on cleats, and uh, they stick right into that ice like that. You can see, you could see he didn't even slip at all. There's the sun; it's right there. It's a little bit further, and we'll be in the sun. It's a little chilly in here. <laughs> <clears throat> Sure my mustache is freezing up already from my breath. It's a little cold. <clears throat> and I'm on mile one, probably. Something like that. <clears throat> there we go. We're just about to come out in the sun. You see the sun right here. And we've been back there in that canyon pretty chilly back there still walking on somebody's tracks here somebody drove up here the other day <clears throat> before the roads were closed and here comes the Sun right here Woo! oh that you can feel it like instant that is very nice it's amazing look at that it's amazing what happens when the Sun hits you it just it just makes everything just feel so much warmer even though it really isn't any warmer that sun just really nice and nice and warming you can see there are lots of deer and elk tracks around here those are elk tracks right there going up the hill you might see some of those today So, so it's not hunting season up here anymore and that means that the roads get closed and there really isn't anybody up here at all only me and it's it's a very unique feeling when you do something like this solo just to be alone and feel that you know <clears throat> in hunting season there'd be people driving up this and everything so you wouldn't be that alone but Right now you're alone. So we're headed the farthest hill up there. We're headed to the top of that and then back behind it. And then we'll start going down the other side. At the top here somewhere, I'm gonna stop and have, make myself a cup of coffee and warm up again. I brought some coffee in my saddlebags and my little stove to make it with.
I'm about on mile three of 19 right now, so I've got 16 miles to go or so yet. <clears throat> it's not a real quick trip but on this type of trail here. So I'll have to make up some time at the end or it's going to be a long day. <laughs> but when I get that fresh horse, uh, his name is G3. That should help quite a bit because he'll be completely fresh. When I got to about here, I was looking behind me thinking, man, this is such a beautiful shot. So I need to get a picture of me riding past the camera. And that's when it all turned to crap. got off what the hell oh, you dumbass Oh, okay, I was stupid and I got bucked off. How in the hell did that just happen? I tried to be a pain in the ass. My rib is hurting really bad. And because I hit the ground funky. Oh, son of a buck. Why did I do that? I should have stayed with him but I didn't for some reason and now I'm without a horse so and my back is hurting really bad I got a lot of pain in the back area and I'm gonna have to follow him down here and I'm guessing the piece of shit is not gonna stop until he gets to that gate way down there so that's not gonna be fun Oh, I think I broke a rib. I might have broke a rib. Uh, why did I do that? Why the hell did I get off? I should have rode him. Uh, Could have rode him. I know what the hell I was thinking. When you're... Uh, I am a long ways away from anywhere. 
right now. And that horse is not going to stop up it. <clears throat> Son of a gun. And I think I might have broke a rib on that. I don't know what I was thinking. I wasn't sitting all the way. So I... Oh, man. Well, I got a long freaking walk back here. Son of a... Oh, man. I'm gonna text Paige, uh, tell her, I have somebody meet me down here at the bottom. Oh, sh That is not good, guys, not good at all. Uh, oh, man, that hurts, that hurts. Losing stuff, oh, he's losing all my stuff out of the saddlebag. Oh, mm. all right. Wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know it? Piece of crap. You son of a Luckily, I was smart enough to take a Garmin in reach with me that I can text my wife with. And I texted her to have my dad come around the other side and pick me up. She was a little worried and I told her I was okay, trying to keep it light so she didn't worry about me too much because uh, I knew I was going to have to walk out of there for quite a ways. So I had her tell my dad to come around the other side with the horse trailer and pick me up where he dropped me off and to bring a four-wheeler so he could start coming up that road and pick me up at least some of the way on this mountain. <sighs> got to figure out how to carry all this crap down without without a horse. Shoot, I hit wrong. It shouldn't have been that bad, actually. It's caught a bit of snow, but for some reason I hit wrong. And broke something, or, or at least knocked my back out of joint or something. Stupid bugger. Ah, my arm is kinda hanging funny. It's hard to breathe. I'm having trouble getting a breath. I'm pretty sure there's a rib broke back there. Uh, on the back side. But I'm not spitting blood or anything, so that's good. Oh, the problem is I'm not sure I dare get on him in my condition. Even if I could get you, because if I could, if he goes to bucking again, I don't know what the heck I would do. I was in good shape before, now, now it would hurt like a son of a If I can't get back on, I'm gonna have to walk down another three miles or two miles or whatever it was. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure one of my ribs broke right by my, in the back next to the, next to the, uh, the shoulder plate. So I might as well talk to you guys. I got a long ways to walk kind of hard to get a, a good breath in because it's kind of a sharp pain back there and, uh, so I can tell I mean every time I take a deep breath or something my something pops back there that's not good uh, something's popping over something else so I mean I can walk obviously uh, I just feel a bunch of stuff popping which is not a not a great feeling when you move or you breathe. It pops all over the place back there. So hopefully that's just a rib. Uh, nothing's. I don't feel like anything's uh, internally hurt or something. But dang, I'm a long ways from anywhere right now. So I gotta walk a long ways. Uh, It's another mile or so before you get to where I'm pretty sure 
he'll be waiting. I'm trying to kind of hold my rib in here so that I swing my arm and it pops all over the place. But, so I don't think I'm going very fast. I'm just kind of moseying along. Dang it, back. I heard a pop or a crunch when I hit. That's never a good thing. I'm just glad nothing's punctured or anything. Anyway, turned into a little different kind of video. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry for me, because I was stupid and allowed that stupid idiot to buck me off. And then, sorry for everybody else, because so I contacted my wife and she'll get my dad to come up back to where we started from but that's a good three or four miles from here so uh, 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 if we're following his tracks here I'm guessing he's gonna be down here at this fence but let's get uh, problem with ribs is and I, that's why I assume this is a rib is because it makes it hard to breathe and if you slip or sneeze or anything that hurts so I'm trying to enjoy myself uh, uh, even with pain because if it is a rib I won't be able to do this crap for very for a while Pro uh, probably all winter long so I'm trying to <clears throat> enjoy the scenery I mean it's beautiful up here I can't breathe but it's beautiful uh, mm. you don't want to slip either okay he might if I don't see him there oh that'd be bad uh, all right see ya uh, mm. Oh, don't. Okay, now this is a problem because I got to the gate here and I don't see the horse. That means he either jumped the gate because he was going too fast, which I kind of doubt, or he went down the fence line, which I was really afraid of. I was hoping that. No, the fence line goes right up over the hill. He couldn't do that. He's either got to be standing here behind a tree or he jumped the dang gate. Oh, that's a hole. Uh, oh, you don't want to fall like that. That hurts. I don't see this sucker though. Oh man. I hope, I hope he didn't run right through the stupid gate. Oh, maybe he did. Ah. Oh. You gotta be kidding me. I don't know, the gate doesn't look. Oh no, there it is. I say it's there. So he didn't go through the gate. Where the heck did he go? Huh. I just don't see him. touch in with you as soon as I get to the gate over there another couple hundred yards and see what I can see his tracks probably went down the fence line but good grief the fence line goes all the way up over that hill so I don't know how he would have done that so you might wonder why in the heck all injured and everything do I think to turn the camera on and do it well number one i do it all the time and uh, number two it keeps me occupied it gives me something to do i can talk to you guys but much easier than i can talk to somebody else in a text message so so i'll chat with you guys until i get down further unless there's a gate over there that you can get through uh, anyway 
I'm going a little slower now. I slipped a couple times and kind of plunged through some some a, a crusted snow part, and that did not agree with me. So I'm not going very fast now. You can see he went up and down this fence line a few times. There must be a gate open over there that he can get through because he went up and down the fence a couple times and then and then disappeared. And it looks like there's one more set of tracks going up the other side over there. Looks like he tried to get, he stayed here for a while, but he ain't here now. So he must have went right through that and then headed down straight shot probably stuck in some dang hole somewhere because what they do is if they don't go down a trail he's probably going to get stuck in downfall or something down there oh well at least he won't be all the way up here i guess but somebody's gonna have to go get him oh, man i was hoping he was gonna sit right here and wait for me can't yeah, see tracks go right through this gate over here and then he didn't he didn't go the right way though he went that way which means he's I don't know whose pasture that is but he's gonna have another fence to go through somewhere because if, if he'd have turned if he'd have turned this way like into there he'd be back where we need him but he didn't he went that direction because He's making a beeline straight back to the uh, trailer. Oh, shoot. Can't believe we'll be able to ride him for a while. Oh, man. He needs it. I cost myself a lot. It cost not just today, but when you look at this rib thing, this will cost me a lot of time. If it is a rib, they take forever to heal. I've had a broken one before. Not this one but a different one. Oh man you can just feel it when you when you breathe this sucker is just trying to pop over something uh, I have no idea the problem with ribs is you can't really do anything about them they, you can't really cast yourself you got to cast your whole dang body to, to do that so uh, yeah. Harder to climb a hill, that's for sure. A lot harder. Oh, I can't believe it. That's what not thinking will do. I wasn't thinking that I was riding. You got to ride a young horse like a young horse. You always, you never trust them. And I was just piling on there. It's like I would on an old broke horse because I trusted him not to do that. But he's too spooky to trust him like that. I can only imagine, you know, like them old cowboys or somebody that lived back before our time what this would have meant to them. I mean, I I am, you know, in modern times, I don't have to walk for 20 miles to get somewhere. You know, I have in reach, so I just texted my wife and said, hey, you know, I got bucked off. You're gonna have to call dad and have him meet me back where he left me. But, you know, if you're not, if if that's not, you know, if that's not an option back in the day, oh, then what do you do? You know, you're out here, no food, uh, in the cold. I mean, in my condition, I could hike for, I could probably make it back to Raidersburg, which is about 15 miles, but it wouldn't be fast, I can tell you that. It would take a while. So I'm glad I live. And people say, well, man, I wish I lived 100 years ago. Or I was born in the wrong century or something. 
I always say, I don't know, the thought, the thought might be there, but there's a lot of amenities that we have that you didn't have back then. So I'm glad I live in the times that I do. The ribs, the ribs are tough because you can't ever, there's no place you can put it. So. which is worse than walking through the deep snow or walking on this this is where people have driven and the problem is, is is this makes me slip so if I slip I have to catch myself it's actually I think it's probably worse than than just walking through the deeper snow actually is better I think oh My horse is back on the road. There's his tracks right there. I must have missed where he came in, but he's back on the road headed down. Well, that's, I guess, better. The horse trailer won't be there to greet him, so I don't know where, I don't know where he'll stop, but better than having him way the heck up there somewhere, I guess. Huh. They must have found another gate that comes back into this one. And he came back and hit the road. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I slipped. Oh, oh. Don't slip. Oh, man. Stupid thing. You know, the real problem with hurting yourself like this is you beat yourself up because in snow so I don't slip as much maybe um, you beat yourself up because you're like if, if as, you know especially if you've been injured before in your life you understand this isn't just a two-day deal you know this inhibits you for a long time when something like this happens so and hopefully it's just a rip nothing else major dang it all right I just, I just wanted to share that with you, like, when you're injured, sometimes you just, it's, it's really hard to take just because mentally you're like, oh crap, this is going to be a long time. It's like one costly mistake. Every costly mistake, every, every mistake like that costs you greatly. Okay, well, here's where the, that we went over that ice this morning. I'm going to try to go around it this time I don't really feel like slipping and falling on that uh, I think the horse did too I see his tracks right here in front of me I'm trying to kind of relax my shoulder blades and stuff if I relax them it feels a little better So I was talking about risks, managing risks, you know. The risk I didn't, I know this horse, but I've never ridden him with heavy saddlebags like that. I've ridden him with small ones. And those heavy saddlebags are what caused the, the issue and then me not being prepared for him to go to bucking right away. I didn't, under, I did not, I didn't expect that. So that's the problem with don't slip, don't slip. That's the real problem with like knowing a horse a little too well is very often you can get to where you um, trust them too much. And then you think, oh, well, you know, I just, I just piled on there like I would a old broke horse. And that's just not how you could, you, that's not how you want to do that with a horse like Calabar, you want to get on there nice and gentle. Make sure you're intentional. Get your leg over. Make sure you got a good grip when you do. So if he does go to bucking, and keep your mindset 
to where if he does go to bucking, you just decide to stay with him instead of bailing like I did, which is like a rookie stupid thing to do. I know I keep saying that. I'm just saying, that's a rookie stupid thing to do. Stay on him, stick, keep your mind in the middle. Let them buck it out and run down the trail and act like an idiot until they're done. And then turn them around and go back. It's not that big a deal when they do that. The problem comes when you decide that you need to get off. That's where the problem rises because there is no good way to get off of a horse while it's bucking, especially one that's that big. Ugh. came down down the trail and he guess he came all the way down on the road and then just headed down the road too and dad luckily dad was coming up the, the road when he was going down it up here oh, and uh, was able to get him caught so at least so he's in there now like acting like nothing happened uh oh Might be missing my 360 camera. That's not good. Oh, man. I'm not hiking back up there to find it right now. I'll tell you that. Not doing too bad though right now. It's good. Just to... Yeah, I think so. Yep, I can't. Okay, that's. Need another shoulder. Shoot. That was harder than I thought. Yeah. Okay. I can get it, I think. Probably, huh? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Mm. Okay. I can get it when I'm around the other side, yeah. there. Oh, I can get it. Just wait till I get around the other side. Oh, I can get it. There we go. Uh, all right, I got it. This is keep trying to want to fall out of your Oh, yeah. So Dude, I must have missed that camera. We came off. I didn't see it because it was too much snow. Uh, oh, shoot. This is way more, way worse than walking. Uh, sitting here. Oh, shoot. This chair is not the right position to be in. That's for sure. This is definitely a worse position than walking. So I'm gonna have to. <laughs> you wanna just walk on? Oh, I have to see if I can get the scooter over. Oh. 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 oh okay, well, that's better. That's a little better. I had my butt cheek scooted over too much to the side. I'm missing a couple things out of my saddlebag. Oh, I but, wondered. Oh well. What are you gonna do? I'm not gonna walk up there and get him right now. Just so you know. I can see I can see just looking in there that there's a couple things missed. I picked up what I saw, but I must have missed some stuff. Yeah, you might have stuff scattered along the road here. I didn't look through that. No, I bet it was right there at the beginning when he was bucking still. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> jumping up. Saddle's a little twisted over here. 
see what I'm missing out of my out of my saddlebags. Saddlebag no. Oh. It's gonna, I was just gonna see what I was missing, but I'll wait till you take it off. I have to have my dad take the saddle off for me. You can see it's over to the side a little bit. Dang thing. Somewhere along the line he tore my tore the saddlebags in half. I'm not sure if that's just flapping over the and my camera is missing. I had a camera in there, it's gone. But it looks like everything else is still in, in here, so that's good. Well, the horse is fine. He's gonna have to be um, ridden again at a later date, though, because I ain't riding him right now like this. Man, he just uh, can't even hardly get in the pickup, much less for a horse. So, Dad's gonna Dad's gonna put him away for me. Might be too much moving. I better go sit down. I better get back to the house. And, uh, take her easy for a bit. So dealing with horses, there is always a risk of injury or something bad happening. So you, especially with younger horses like this is, Calabar is only five years old and he's, it's not, it's not like he's been ridden a ton up to now. This last year he's ridden quite a bit. So in this situation, how would have I how would I have avoided what happened? <clears throat> There's a few things that that hit me right off the bat. And when something like this occurs to you, when when you have an injury like this, your brain just tries to figure it out. Especially if you're me, um, you figure it like, what happened? Why did this happen? So the knowledge of horses uh, that I have is enough to tell me several things that could have prevented this most likely you can't ever say 100% because it's in the past but uh, could have presented that I would say 95% could have avoided this completely and that the number one thing there is preparation I felt I was prepared because of the writing I had done on him earlier in the year but he hadn't been ridden hardly at all for the last three weeks and he was sitting there in a smaller pen getting fatter. I wasn't able to ride him. I was really busy with my other businesses. So that caused me to do something that I shouldn't have done. I should have prepared. I knew it. I just didn't have time for it. I didn't take the time. I didn't push off this video to where I could have ridden him enough to get him to where he was prepared for what we were doing. For the preparation, I would have gone over and ridden him uh, at least three times, uh, half hour at a time even, and that would have taken that edge off. I, I don't know how it does, but it, it just sharpens them up. You take them out, you move them around, you make them turn off the bridle, uh, you get them more comfortable on their saddle again, you re remind them that they're broke, and then the one thing that did not occur to me is that he was going to have such an objection to, number one, being alone in the mountains, and number two, the saddlebags. Uh, I have ridden him with saddlebags almost every time in, I rode him in the summer. And I rode him for long periods of time, you know, like uh, 15 miles at a time, 20 miles at a time, moving cows with saddlebags. The problem is, is the saddlebags that I used on this trip, they were heavier and they hang way lower. So he really, I could tell he was really not comfortable with these things immediately when I left the pickup and horse trailer. So it would have been really good to prepare him for that by putting those on earlier. Then there was a, something that, uh, so th that preparation, riding him a few times, making sure he was comfortable with the saddlebags, meaning putting them on him, making them flop a lot. So he was familiar with the feeling of this heavy flopping on the side. If he jumped or ran or anything, um, that's something you can prepare at home 
so that when it happened in the mountains, it wouldn't have surprised him so much and caused him to spook like he did. The thing that I couldn't have prepared for was when the saddlebags broke. So let's go back for just a second and, and I'll explain to you exactly what happened. I put the camera in the tree, ran back to him, was kind of rushing it because I, my camera had been freezing. Uh, the battery had been freezing because it was so cold. So I, only, I thought maybe I only have 35, 45 seconds to get on and ride by him. So I was rushing everything. That's never a good idea with a young horse. I could tell he was uncomfortable. He was really nervous being alone up there in the timber like that. Uh, a lot of times movement, when you're riding them down the trail, you can get by with that. But when they're stopped and they can think about it and they can look around and notice that they're all alone, that's when you have trouble. So I know that I just, I just was avoid, I just wasn't thinking that through. When I swung up, I did not swing up like I should on a younger horse. I swung up just normal. I just swung over without taking my time, getting a handhold because um, he was nervous, moving everything out of the way, getting set, and then slowly swinging my leg over. That's what I usually would do. And I rushed this. I swung over just like a normal and my camera, the stick connected to my camera was sticking out of my saddlebag about this far. My leg hooked it and it flipped the saddlebag up like this. Well, immediately, because I knew that was going to cause me a problem, because when that flopped back down, I thought, he's not going to like that. So I wanted to get set. So I threw my leg high to get over it. So when I, when I hit, it surprised him because that thing flipped up. Then I immediately flipped my leg over before he got comfortable, which flopped the saddlebag back down. At the same time, my leg hit him again, and he jumped. When he jumped the first time, somewhere in there, the saddlebags broke in half right behind the saddle, and which caused them to flop down about another five or six inches. That I couldn't have prepared for. I have no idea that that was going to happen. And so when he jumped, those things flopped and hit him in the sides, which made him jump again. The second jump flopped those things again, and that was it. He panicked and went to bucket. Because as soon as he panicked and tried to go forward, I pulled him backwards, which when you have a horse that, an animal that flight is their, their uh, the way that they get away from danger is flight. So immediately when he couldn't flee, he had to go to something else, which was bucking. So as soon as I pulled back, he went to bucking. This is where I made the biggest mistake of all. I was not set. I had just, with the first two jumps, he'd gave me a huge bruise on the back of my leg because he threw me on the top of the saddle horn and the buck and roll. But I had my seat kind of back when he broke in half. I had no stirrup on the other side. My foot was loose. I was not set. I had no handhold of anything. And so when he went to bucking, my mind said, bail. Now that's the worst thing you can do. It would have been a pretty nasty ride through that timber with him bucking like that, not knowing, knowing now that those saddlebags were going to flop down like that, I'm sure it wouldn't have stopped right away. It would have been a, a one heck of a wild ride. But I do think I could have rode him through that. And when when you're riding them, even though it could be really rough um, in a couple of areas bouncing around on that saddle, if I could have stuck with him, I wouldn't have broke a rib, most likely. So, uh, that's something that you you always want to keep in mind. I can't go back and redo this, but the only when I usually get on a young horse, my mindset I have to tell myself: if anything happens, you're going to stick with this horse. You're not going to get off. And because I tell myself that, when anything happens, then I I go to grab on, not dive off. And the problem was, is because I was just trying to swing on there, I was rushing the whole thing for the camera and everything. My mindset wasn't thinking, hang on. It was, it wasn't thinking anything until everything blew up to high heaven. And then when it did, I dove off because I didn't have a seat. I could, I think I could have got a seat, but I didn't think that way. My immediate reaction was to dive off, which is the worst reaction you can have. Uh, always safer on the horse than off the horse. Almost always, okay? Um, so when I dove off, then I landed right here 
right here with my arm extended right across the rock ridge on the edge of the trail. And that broke. I heard a big crunch and I could feel it right behind, so behind me right here, right underneath my shoulder blade, I heard a crunch and my rib, I'm sure, pushed that way and uh, snapped. So that's that's really what happened. How I probably could have avoided it is preparation, thinking through things, not rushing, making sure the camera wasn't the priority. The priority was safety and then camera. Most likely I could have gotten through this with absolutely no reaction from the horse if I'd have done it right. So these are things that you always have to think about. This, this you cannot do, and I'm saying he's, he's kind of a, uh, he's a greener horse and greener means not as he's not bomb proof at all, by any stretch obviously but he's not as uh ridden down he's not as experienced with things so with those horses you have to pay attention even more but you have to do this even with your old broke horses these these things are not atvs they do have a mind of their own they do get scared they do decide to do something uh, that you don't want to do sometimes and you always have to be thinking these through what what am I going to do when this happens? How do I make this play safely? And I didn't do those things. And that cost me greatly. It almost always costs you greatly. So um, that's what I can help you with as far as this goes. Now I'm, you know, five or six weeks at least to get these things healed up. And I'm pretty swelled up uh, around this region. I can't lay down, which is horrible. That, that's the worst part is I have to sleep in a recliner because laying down, I did lay down for a little bit today. This is a week into it, um, but then I couldn't get back up. I'd have help to get back up because you can't move anything. So when I, when I came back off of that mountain, um, walking down that trail was pretty rough because anytime you'd slip, you'd have to catch yourself and it would just like that right where it's broken, just fire. I mean, just a fire poker. I found out I did, I must have stabbed myself in the other leg with my spur when I landed. I have a huge bruise there with a big old mark. <clears throat> and I have a really major bruise on the inside of my leg where I hit the saddle horn that first jump. So those, this is something you want to avoid. And it can be avoided most of the time. As long as safety, you think about safety before you do something, your mind will be in the right place. Uh, even experienced people, and I wouldn't say I'm a cowboy like, um, I know several cowboys, way more experienced than I am, but I am experienced far greater than a lot of people. And even in this case, I rushed things because of my experience, maybe that got me into a real big problem. So always remember that kind of stuff. Uh, that's it for me. Uh, hope you enjoyed this episode and, um, uh, enjoyed it in a way and not enjoyed it another way. Hope you found it educational and helpful to you. Um, I will be back hopefully every week. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting around at the moment to make these videos, but I'll come up with something after Christmas and uh, try to get a video to a longer video out to you every week. And then, of course, I put out short videos about all subjects doing ranching and horses and, and um, wolves and wildlife in Montana, things like that. So hope you enjoy that. Until next time. God bless, and I'll see you then.